Hey guys, how you doing? We made it. The hump day is here yet again. It's a glorious day. And man, have we got a treat for you switching up the high vibration conversations. We're not switching it up. Always high vibration, high vibration conversation. But man, let me bring in my panel with you right off the bat. My special guest first, Mr. Mark Sargent, brother. How's it going? Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely absolutely it's been a long time since uh we've talked about before the show a lot of you might not know my first attempt at podcasting was about about a year and a half ago uh mimicking his very popular strange world calling it strange realm for about only about five episodes interviewing some of my most favorite people including yourself miss karen jaron brian and and dave weiss of course of course dave well, let me go ahead bring in the rest of my crew austin from the mellow dome and of course, Troubling Tribune from the self-proclaimed channel, the absolute best at true earth debating. What's up, gentlemen? How you doing? What's up, guys? Another Absolutely. fantastic hump day. Okay, great. So we got a lot of things to kind of cover. We can go a lot of different directions with this. But Mark, go ahead. Would you please start us off for it? Because you're the one that kind of put this in my head so many years ago about this ter uh, terrarian that we that we find ourselves in terrarium, excuse me, sure. being just more than that, but some type of highly sophisticated simulation is the best catch all term word for the moment. It seems to trigger some people sometimes, but I think we're going to work around that today. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So you want, you, you want me to break that down a bit for you? Sure. If you don't mind. Sure. No, I'd be happy to. Uh, I, if if you've heard me do interviews, I, I've not been shy about saying that uh, flat. The, one of the big reasons I use the term flat Earth and or enclosed world is that is the lowest common denominator in terms of trying to understand this place. Meaning, uh, you know, I'd I'd love to jump into, and I, I wish I did over the years, jump more into simulation and matrix and virtual worlds and and every other description for it. But most people don't get it. Still, I mean, remember the matrix is now whew, twenty four years old, which is um, stunning uh, how how fast time flies. And yet, most people really don't understand. It. It's like, oh wow, it was a great action film. It's like, yeah, but do you really know what it was about? There, there is a lot of uh, deeper meaning there in, in that movie, and you know, we you know we had all other movies like the Thirteenth Floor, and then the previous versions of that, and people didn't really get it. So for me, I kind of you know I, I kind of uh, uh, compare it to the video game world, which is uh, the video game world. Most people don't understand that ninety nine percent of all games that you play, whether it be Fortnite or Warcraft or Minecraft or whatever it is. Uh, they're totally flat. Uh, they're built in, in fact, they're built in a, a giant box and there is no dome, uh, even though, you know, the sky looks like a dome. Uh, in fact, the, the, the software that's used or the, the design software that's used is called a sky box system. I mean, yes, of course there's peaks and valleys and, and all the little, you know, bumpy bits in the middle, but the, the edges line up and, and they're squared off. Everything's uh, in, in right angles because computers love right angles. They, they don't like circles at all. They, they don't, they can't draw them. They can only draw an illusion of a, of a circle in a sphere. So that's, that's really what I, what I like delving into, which is we, if it is, there's, there's a couple things and, and please feel free to, to interrupt me at any point. Cause I, I like to go on rambles. Um, if it is, in, if it is flat and it's enclosed, it's probably digital. Let's start there which is because there are things in this world which just scream simulation. And I'm sorry for the people that, that just don't like simulation theory. It's like, look, come on. Wh what do you think our entertainment industry has been striving to do for decades? Ever since we even came up with the, the, the concept of it. That's what we've been screaming to do. And everybody wants it. Everyone wants the holodeck. Everybody wants the virtual reality. Everyone wants the matrix. You don't have to like it, but that's what we'd love to do. There's been all sorts of books and science fiction movies that have talked about when we, in fact, as much as I don't like to quote Scott Adams now, you know, the, the creator of, of Dilbert and, and Dogbert because he got himself in a little trouble uh, recently after after he got the shot and then he regretted having the shot and then he figured, I don't care, so I'm just going to talk about whatever. But he wrote a forward to a book years ago, which I loved, and he said, the last invention we'll ever make as a civilization is the holodeck because that's all he had really to go off of was Star Trek Next Gen. 
back back in the day. And the, what he what he meant by that was he says once the holiday he in fact he laughed uh, in other things. But it's like it, it just stunned him to no end that the holodeck on on Star Trek Next Gen was always vacant. It was always open. There wasn't this big waiting line in there. It's like, are you kidding? You're in deep space, supposedly, right? There's going to be lines out the freaking door for that. That thing is going to be booked like like a like a reservation at a hot restaurant. And he goes, once that is invented, no one will want to do anything else. In fact, you know, the, the, the concept of deep space just goes out the window. It's like, why? You can simulate anything. So why, why would you ever want to do anything on your own? And so basically what he was saying was that people would just make enough money to plug into that and that's all they would do and that would just collapse civilization as we know it all, all forward progress for our civilization would just stop no one i mean of course there'd be some ambitious people out there but the masses no the masses are lazy always have been always will be and uh, so the simulation would so sorry let me back up a little bit that that being said, why should anybody be surprised that because we are trying to make simulations at such an accelerated rate, why would it surprise anybody that we might already be in one? Right? I mean, it's and we can talk about base reality and, and that concept later down the road. But that's that's my opening statement. There you go. Go ahead, traveling. Your thoughts, brother. Oh, you're muted. Every time, right? Once per show. <laughs> Hate to see it. Hate to see it. Oh, that's a rookie mistake. Oh, yeah. I make them all the time, too. You should uh, watch my show, too. I biff the intro at least once a week. So uh, that's always like I really did today. No, dude. Dude, I once went seven minutes on mute where, <laughs> where I was by myself <laughs> until somebody messaged me. It's like, is there a show happening? It's like, oh, damn it. I guess oh, not. Man. Not for another seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, first off, I, I want to thank you, Mark, for taking the time. This is actually uh, my first opportunity to be able to have a conversation with you. So oh, cool. uh, big shout out, legend in the community. I know that you've uh, been a huge influence to you know just about everybody in this community. Thanks, son. So, uh, huge shout out, massive props, uh, big shoes to fill for mm -hmm. the next generation coming up, which I, I mean, I don't even know what we would call it, right? Do we have generation names for the YouTubers yet? But uh, not yet. Not yet. In our community, you know, I, I still like just calling us uh, uh, Flat Earth 2.0, really, just to make sure no one confuses us with the, the original Flat Earth Society, which to this day is never fully integrated with us. And I never really understood why, but whatever. Yeah, it uh, almost seems uh, weird, but I won't go mm -hmm. too far into, into that side of things. Right. Uh, Sticking to the topic at hand, right? The simulation theory. Um, I mean, I'll, first off, I start by saying it's totally, I think it's totally possible. I don't know how we would be able to differentiate between a simulation and a sort of base reality when we do go that way. Right. Um, but I, I definitely get what you mean. And, and the video games all having flat maps, like that was one of the big things to me that told me that it's possible for the earth to be flat, right? We have, we literally have all these um, models, if you will, of how it can work. And uh, yeah, the way that the sky works, it's all all digital processing. So when it comes to you know how we're dealing with actual reality, how would we be able to determine um, you know any kind of realness, right? From you know ones and zeros, a computer program that we happen to be residing in, right? Yep. And this happened like generations ago. How would we even know, right? I, I get the concept. The civilization. This would happen every time. Civilization creates a holodeck. A uh, whole world migrates into holodeck and then begins a brand new society within the holodeck and nobody knows the wiser, right? How would, I guess that's like my biggest question and contingency is like, how would we determine uh, the difference? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, let me, let me interject one more there in which you said how, you know, you just gave me one of the ideas, which was uh, how, how you could fool civilization so easily. And again, uh, the M. Night Shyamalan movie, The Village, from 20 years ago was such a great and, and remember they didn't use they that wasn't a digital uh, uh con job that was physical where you just take kids you set up a community you build basically an amish community in the middle of a national forest uh and then you can tell the kids anything you want it's like oh yeah by the way we live in the 1800s and this is the level of technology you make sure planes don't fly over it you're very wealthy people 
And what I thought, again, which I built into the clues was fascinating, was when those adults that move the kids there pass away, when they die, no one's lying anymore. The kids could pass lie detectors tests. It's like, oh, yeah, we're living in our little town and it's the 1800s and they would not know any different. And I found that fascinating. That, again, I'll end with this. The, the line from the Truman Show is so very, very true, which is we believe the world that is presented to us. As long as it's done sincerely and with uh, conviction, why would we question it? We well, don't know any different. Speaking so, of that's a great line, Mark, actually. Um, Speaking of the Truman, I don't know if you know recently, I've been much motivated to reinvigorate the storyline myself doing my own production with my friend Skyler here being my quote unquote Truman. So well, the idea would be not to make a whole full fledged movie, which would be awesome one day to do, but to make yeah. small increments of it five to 10 minutes at a time, very TikTok consumable to kind of replant that message, but with a little bit more of F.E., imagery and symbolism behind it maybe not so subtle but you know making our own spin more of an entertainment than documentary style obviously there's lots of awesome great documentary people out there i don't think i need to be another one and there's so many people who do it but better to be matter of fact the one you're just in untold origins i can't wait to watch that it looks amazing i i have not seen it yet uh i don't know if i don't think it's even done i don't think it's even out of editing yet but uh i'm hoping for the best they, he just released um, a really good trailer. I mean, the production value is impeccable. I'm, I'm very impressed. I can't wait to watch it. I hope I can maintain some that type of quality when I release mine. Cool. Matter of fact, do you mind if I, I uh, show you a quick little snippet? I made this kind of just last night. I wanted to show off kind of a, a, what we were talking about. It's a little got to do with simulation, a little bit of uh, robot Freeman Morgan. I'm going to show you real quick. Sure. Oh, see, check it out. Go take a little break. Two minutes. Be right back. I am not Morgan Freeman. What you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. We have to go from ready to start. Two, one, two. Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. That was it. I just wanted to show off that a little bit. Later cool. Right. <laughs> Hopefully to bring that type of quality, but a little bit epicness, make it a little bit more theatrical. Need to bring some entertainment to this side of the community, and that's what I want to be about. 
I kind of was hoping to entangle some of the maybe even simulation theory in there, make it a little bit men in blacky, as it were. I like it. Uh, my man Alex Michael, by the way, says you ruined his life back in 2016. Just a reminder that that <laughs> it, it's still affecting others even now, years later. The ripple effect. You know, I have heard that a few times. Uh, I am I am both happy and sad that I've ruined a number of people's lives. Uh, as long as I don't get hate mail, totally fine with that. Uh, so 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 thank you, Alex. <laughs> shout out conspiracy music guru uh usually on the third hour you don't have to stay for it, but we go over to rock fan and i do a little uh, conscious music so a lot of the people come over and are on the way home from work or on their lunch break on the west coast and we got to jam out for a while and we do a lot of his music over there naturally cool yeah so uh that on to keep continue the conversation Oh, Austin, matter of fact, you didn't get a chance to say anything. Did you want to put your input on? Your yeah. First? Um, first of all, it's an honor to be talking with you, Mark. I met you at Flattoberfest. You're an absolute legend. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. And um, well, my thing is with uh, simulation theory, you know, uh, when we make these video games, like you were suggesting, all these games that we make, they're fantastical places. Um, so if this place is a simulation, then maybe the world that is outside of the simulation is not a better place than this simulation that we're in right now. You know, kind of like uh, the idea of the matrix when he wakes up and he sees this destroyed city, no sun and all that kind of stuff. So what are your thoughts on, on that? If this is a simulation, what is the, the real realm like? Well, again, it, you could go what one of three ways in, in that uh, one is that it's a better world and, and, you know, okay, so what's outside of this place? One of three choices. One, uh, it's a utopia, and this place is just to give you some perspective, uh, kind of like slumming it until you go back. You can't appreciate what you had without understanding what you've lost. Uh, the I'm a big fan of the, the term dualism, which is you can't appreciate something without knowing its opposite. You know, hot without cold, light without shadow, pain without pleasure which is why you know people you know like trust fund kids they're always just disasters because they you know they don't know any of the hero's journey you know it's just all instant gratification yeah no struggle right so i, I mean that's the one i i tend to go with because this place seems to be a lot like school meaning uh, i believe in what what's out of this place you know we, we would call it utopia nirvana shambhala heaven whatever you want uh, this, you know, this, this place could be one of three things, uh, either, you know, a prison, but if it's a prison, it's an awfully nice prison, you know, technically speaking, it's really beautiful and, and well, uh, decorated. Uh, it could be entertainment, you know, like a giant reality show, which, you know, I suppose it could be sort of a hybrid for other beings, but eh, if that's the case, there's not, you know, for the people that are down here, there's not a lot of people that are having fun all the time. Uh, bliss is a very hot commodity that is in very limited quantities here. So I tend to see it as a school, which is kind of both. You know, you, you, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not. Most of the time you're trying to learn something and at the end you got to leave. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a limited experience. Could it be that what's outside of this world is worse like the Matrix? Sure. Sure, I suppose. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to discount that. There was another show, a um, uh, British television show, I believe it was called Red Dwarf, touched on that, which I thought was fascinating, which which, which was a, a great episode. Uh, and then, of course, the third would be just neutral, but I don't see that happening either, which is, you know, you're, you're, you're living a world that's very, very similar to this. But if that's the case, then what are you doing here? If that was the case, then this should be some sort of fantasy realm where you can do a lot of things. And as far as I know, there's no superheroes. There's nobody flying around, which I always thought was interesting, by the way. A lot of things are hoaxed over the years, but no one's ever hoaxed a superhero, nor have we even heard a rumor of a superhero flying flying around. Any, a any... vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, short short answer. I, I believe that what's outside of this is a, is a utopia and that we are here to gain perspective and our memory of this place has been or our memory of that utopia has been suspended very deliberately so that we don't bail immediately you know it's that there's an old saying i know some people call it a dead metaphor you can't have your cake and eat it too uh i i never liked that saying it's basically you can't have your cake eat it too and still have your cake you can't remember where you came from 
live this life, appreciate it. You know, you, you can't have both. So you have to, you forget, there might be some glimmers and flashes, which is probably people, you know, talk about reincarnation in previous lives, but you can't remember fully. And if you could, well, that'd be a problem because if that was the case, people would bail and instantly <laughs> when something went wrong. It's like, this sucks. Where's the nearest bridge? And they start jumping. See, yeah. I have to disagree with you there, actually. Do I, you? Right. And, and here's why. Here's why. Yes. Such uh, hypothetically, let's say I reach such an enlightened state to where I can remember where I came from. Well, yeah. then that means I also remember why I came here. So then the idea kind of negates itself to think that I would jump out at a first sign of hostility when I remembered the things in the first place. So then I would naturally know how to solve those problems now vibrating at such a high state of being. And if you can remember where you came from, I assume you remember why you're here or at the very least have a much better clue of why you're here. And you're for, for you, you are probably a more enlightened being. But coming from the video game industry, I can tell you that the cheat codes are far too tempting when you give to you give it to somebody. I know no one who's gotten the cheat codes who never used them. Well, that's because the ones who actually mastered them wouldn't share them with you. <laughs> How do you know not they're not? So, not just you, not disrespectfully, they wouldn't share them with me either, simply because we probably couldn't conceive them. I'm thinking I'm, what I'm suggesting is, and we could all obtain such a state, and it might be necessary for us sure. to kind of combine all these great ideologies of, of our realm and even looking going forward by looking within. My idea, uh, the kind of opposite of Austin's, is that for us to go forward, we got to go inside. So if we want to entertain the next level of flat earth, we probably have to entertain the next level of ourselves and then what we're willing to accept as a potential reality and what well, we're kind of subscribing as crazy or lunacy. But sure. in that thin line could be the next clue to really experiencing what's beyond the poles, rather it be there physically or, or subconsciously. Hmm. All right. All right. I will uh, also add, um, Chris, uh, well, I'm not sure who I was, should address this to, but essentially, I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you really wanted to do something and then you start to do it and you get like halfway into it and you're like, man, this is awful. This is nowhere near what I expected it to be. I really wish that I wouldn't have done this. Is there like an exit strategy? Like how the heck right. what the heck am I going to do, right? Imagine uh, being, you know, a spiritual entity and you're talking about, hey, man, this world down here is really messed up. We need some people. We need some souls to go down there and fix it. And it's like, uh, man, I, I mean, I'll go. But I mean, it looks like it's pretty tough. I was like, don't worry. Um, to ensure that you stay there, we'll just wipe your memory. Yeah. <laughs> That's like one of the only ways to ensure that people actually stay there because the cheat codes are. Oh, like, it, it, I, 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 again, I'll, I'll keep this really short, which is if. If heaven or nirvana or you let's just call it utopia, if utopia was a door right over there <laughs> and you had access to it and it was unlocked it is far too tempting way way too tempting everybody gets in a bad mood everybody has down moments i, I know this panel is more enlightened than most but the masses wouldn't couldn't do it could not do it i mean they they can't even stop from opening a bag of chips for two seconds that, that's sitting in the cupboard so well, let's, let's say that you were the hypothetical uh, creator of this realm and all of its little beings, mortal beings walking around. Sure. I would imagine you would design safety protocols to not allow those lower consciousness minded people who can't handle day to day confrontation and, you know, get very frustrated and start, you know, raging with emotion. Right there, you would set in some type of blocking mechanism where they would never even be access to the door because they're not vibrating high enough to even witness the door that they have to walk through. So Good. I'm suggesting that we're all on this journey journey together and sure. are all with all of little key pieces of puzzles and if enough of us come together with our pieces of puzzle we might be able to find said hypothetical door okay hey, uh, the door is astral projection just throwing it out there no i'm not doing that though. <laughs> no I, I i like i like your your thought though which is that the door is only available to uh uh a select few i totally dig that i'm on board with that sure yeah yeah that's mostly what i been kind of pondering my mind I've actually talked about it with a lot with austin over the last year or so as a matter of fact since i talked with you last october fest and we had about a 30 minute conversation or so about this exact thing and i was like we're going to talk about this online one day and here we go manifestation we go. <laughs> in this fractalized uh environment that i really believe that this is a infinite fractal universe so therefore sure. everything is possible here and 
those that we deem crazy, even now as flat earthers, that we don't necessarily understand others that even have even more extreme ideologies, that they are experiencing a certain reality in their given frequency that we're not privy to. Hmm. And then we, you know, since we don't vibe with them, you know, well, well, they're stupid. Oh, they're idiots. How can they not see things my way? And sure. it's kind of it's a whole nother level of egotism, I think, yeah. that, that we kind of push through and not get stuck in a whole new flat earth box where we're like, nope, nope, everything, if it don't fit in this flat earth box, then we can't go over there because, you know, that's Satan or that's wrong or they're trying to trick us. You know, we kind of got to uh, steal back our own creative function because NASA has done a great job along with Disney capturing the imagination that was their model for the longest and i think we need to get take it back i like it i like it all right also mark Sargent likes it everybody so it shows over goodbye <laughs> good night everybody <laughs> great show i thought it was gonna be longer yeah <laughs> what are you thinking austin how are you feeling brother what are you thinking about all this no i'm seeing what pamela thinking. put right here in the chat pamela says many folks feel they were tricked oh and it just went away what uh, tricked into coming here yeah, tricked into coming here, but she doesn't believe that. She says she believes in the highest version of ourselves that we consent consented to entering this simulation. Okay, all right. You know what? Let me. Can I address that directly? So I, I came up with something uh, a while ago, a few years ago, and I, I call it the uh, the genie theory, which is let's say you are in a utopia. This goes to the people that say, "Oh no, I didn't mean to come here." It's like, no, 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 no. You did. Yeah, absolutely volunteered. And let me explain how that would work. So you're in Utopia and you're doing everything you ever, ever wanted to do, right? You've got a genie sitting right over there. You can ask him unlimited wishes, right? You And, and of course, you're going to go for the petty stuff. The world, you know, you date everyone that you ever wanted to date. You became a rock star. You became a, a baseball player. You became, what you know, the greatest surfer in the world. Whatever you want to do. And... This goes on for a while, right? Is this takes some time, and of course, you wish for immortality and perfect health and and all this other stuff. You don't have to worry about doctors and crap like that. And this goes on for decades, and then hundreds of the years. And and if you're lucky and you, you have a really deep imagination, this can go on for probably thousands of years. Which, by the way, I one of my favorite quotes of all time that just doesn't matter if you like his science or not. Uh, was an Albert Einstein quote where he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. I did not get that for a number of years. I get it now. So when your imagination runs out in this world, in this utopia, and you don't know what to do, eventually you go out to the genie and you say to the genie, hey, so I'm, I'm almost tapped out here. What the hell, what the hell am I going to do? And the genie's like, well, I got something for you. You might, you, well, you know, let's face it, you're going to hate it. <laughs> it's, it sucks. Limited lifespan. It's this little world. Limited lifespan, uh, uh, you know, one way in, all sorts of different ways out. And in fact, it's 90% conflict, 99% conflict. You know, the, it's, it's going to be mostly miserable and suffering. It's like, wow, that sounds terrible. Why would I want to go there? It's like, well, because when you go there and you spend your whatever it is, be 50 years, 70 years, whatever, when you get out, you were going to appreciate this place, this utopia, like it was brand freaking new, right? And it's like, wow, that sounds really, really great. It sounds just what I need. What's the catch? And he looks at you and he goes, well, the catch is I got to shut off your memory. Now you remember we had this conversation. Snap. And that's it. You go in. But of course, you know, he asked for your consent beforehand and, and it's not like that. He doesn't trick you. You know, he says, okay, are you sure you want to do this? You're absolutely sure. Okay, you're going to sign this right here. Okay, now you're done. And then you go in and yeah, there's there's no way out because you don't know there is a way out. You know, that again, it's, it's <clears throat> there, you know, there's um, a, a saying which is, or it's a question, a philosophical question, which is what is a human being's uh, um, most default state? Is it laziness or fear? tough one <laughs> because it could really go either way but fear is what keeps you here a lot of the time you know people they suffer through it because you know the the line is and i'll, I'll stop ran, rambling on this the line is well what else am i gonna do you know what what choice do i have which you know and you could take that on a micro level there's lots of people that do things because they think you know what choice do i have hence what's happening for the last three years give or take wink wink anyway there you go that's my little i got something um sorry 
uh, Stephanie Campbell mentioned the Black Mirror episode. Do you watch any Black Mirror? Oh, I love Black right. Mirror. So you and by the way, I, I just finished the the season six, which just dropped all of five episodes. Jeez, but... I haven't even watched it yet. All right, so then <laughs> yeah, you watched cool. the one called um, Joan is Awful. Yes. Yeah, that Joan is Awful will now make your head... teeters. Yeah, that makes your head spin. It teeters yeah. the idea of AI simulation. Um, it. It it's goes crazy. into quantum computing, which is that there's an infinite that that we might be exposed to an if if human beings were exposed to an infinite series of parallel universes, what might happen? <clears throat> yeah, it just made me think because yeah. even now with the writer strike going on, and then soon possibly the actor strike, they could already be adapting AI. <clears throat> You know, and then right now we can do deep fakes. You can get uh, rappers, famous rappers to rap anything you want right now. Right. So who's to say in a few years with, you know, I know that that show was far fetched. I'm not trying to spoil it. Right. For people who haven't seen it. But I feel like that is kind of a warning. And at the same time, Netflix flexing their muscle. Like, how much can we get away with this episode? You know, kind of. Right. And then the idea of how many people are signing their signing their life away with the terms and conditions they're blindly accepting without yeah. reading. Oh, you mean you mean Streamberry? Yeah. Yeah, Streamberry. Yeah, Streamberry. Yeah, Streamberry. We're, we're, in no way are we saying that Netflix is a Goliath that can't be conquered. Uh, but yeah, Streamberry. The, the, yeah. With, with using the same color scheme as Netflix. <laughs> yeah, it was clever. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go watch this. <laughs> Definitely going to have to go. Yeah, I mean, the, the writer's strike will put uh people in a tough position because i guarantee they will use the ai script generators to try to crank out at least the template for generic tv shows and and some movies and you know all they need is a passing grade it doesn't have to be oscar worthy if it get if it gets a crap if if ai can generate a screenplay that can you know generate even a 50 to 60 percent rotten tomato score <laughs> Sorry, writers, that strikes not go well for you. As far as deep faking the actors, that's tricky. I've I've seen a lot of deep fakes over the last five years, and I've seen the evolution of it. You can do some things. Um, I mean, you can do obviously Indiana Jones, the the latest one, which I have not seen. Uh, but you know the fact that you can do a young indie, you can do stunt work and some action sequences. But the the intimate scenes, you know, the the love scenes and the face to face stuff. That that's still tricky. Still, we we haven't gotten quite there yet. Yeah, they couldn't work out the makeout scenes yet. <laughs> no, no, no. Even though there's deep fake porn, which I don't encourage anyone to look at ever, uh, it's uh, it exists. You know that, of course, that was one of the first industries it jumps into, and uh, kind of kind of spooky. Oh. And and one more thing, you can also AI the the voice again. When, when I don't like using the term AI, but it's the only thing people kind of gravitate towards which is it's it's a it's software has just gotten better over the years so like for for voice for example if you have a dry delivery uh someone had sent me something where uh emma watson you know the girl from um harry potter the, they had her reading like the the first chapter of mein kampf right and because her because she's british her delivery is so dry it sounded pretty much spot on, you know, because you know, she doesn't have a lot of high and low inflection and her cadence doesn't really, you know, it's, it's very, very British. Uh, but if you have someone, so you can, you can have for like audiobooks. books. Uh, I remember Karen was, we, you know, I were talking about the audiobooks that that's going to change really, really quickly where you're going to pay for, you, you have the option of having just about anyone read you an audiobook. Any, any, and the, and the actors aren't going to make any extra money because they already signed that those rights away. So you know, like to your thing, Morgan Freeman. You know, I'll have him read me Lord of the Rings. You know that that's going to happen really, really quickly, and no one. It, it'll be good enough that people will will do it. So audiobooks, yeah, that'll probably be the first thing that you'll start seeing articles on. I'll probably right. be one of those people to, to use AI to the advantage. Actually, I'm kind of excited about it. I know there's a lot of you know scary spooky could be wood death stuff going on but i already kind of use a lot of it now i've been playing with chat gpt for weeks it's been helping me learn how to make scripts it's been teaching me how to do help yeah 
Yeah, and and by the way, thank you for not not jumping in and saying that AI. So glad that never resonated. Is the self aware Skynet that's going to wipe out all of humanity? No, that's that's not what AI is. AI is really a compilation. What what's happened is we now have so much content in all media forms online on the in the clouds. So much content that someone just figured out pretty quickly. It's like, oh, hey, we should start writing compiling software to just start grabbing bits and pieces and then using all the uh, the essay and grammar and, and spelling things and just start putting, putting things together, just grabbing stuff off the shelf and making new recipes. And oh yeah, they're mostly going to be fairly bland, but the template will, you don't have to worry about templates anymore. We'll do the templates for you. They're already there. We'll, we'll create them. So it's like, I mean, for screenwriters and, and book writers and, and speech writers and essays. And I mean, if I was a teacher, I don't care if it's high school all the way up, maybe past your master's, I would never assign an essay again ever. <laughs> That's the point. Kids will absolutely figure this out. I mean, unless you know all your kids individually, you know the quality of their work. If, if they're just faces in the crowd, pfft. I mean, I even heard a story that there's a grading uh, uh, AI version that will grade papers. So you can see the problem there, right? Kids will be turning into AI papers and then the teacher will be grading it using AI grading software. It's like, is anyone actually doing anything? So yeah, the, it, the idiocracy factor where people are going to be dumbed down. Yeah. Not, not because the knowledge isn't in front of them. It's just, they're not going to read it. They're just going to, you know, hit a few buttons. So, to your point, because uh, many people tell me that the whole lazy factor, and you're correct, it's not going to go anywhere. But I, I'm still excited for that, for the other side of that coin that gives us the ability to, or gives us more time to think of more projects. The less that we mm. have to do the, you know, the the manual labor work. If we got all these bots at McDonald's, good. I don't really care for humans making my damn burger or not. Right. Usually, bots make it better anyway. So <laughs> for for the bro. for the for the individual, the people that don't have the money or the time, the very creative people, you know who it's going to help? The very cr creative people on a limited budget. Because now that will, yeah, that will be the um, uh, the heavy lifting will be done for them. For those, those people, I envy them. That's great. Because you'll be able to run with it and do things you probably couldn't do beforehand. I'm Just because you did not physically have done. Left and right, man. I'm, I'm learning about it right now. I'm subscribed to some things. Give me some time. I'm gonna right on. Ready. Good for you. It's awesome. Got a whole bunch of AI is going to help us do a, figure out some more FE knowledge through AI. Watch. watch there you that. go. It's going to be something in there. <laughs> Expectations yeah. are high. Hey, Mark, have you ever heard of the cosmic egg story? It's kind of old. You know, you're like the fourth person to bring that up to me in the last month. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah. I, in fact, the, the, I imagine you were going to follow it up with Mark Kenny. The Kenny, uh, no, no, but I, yeah, I know Mark Kenny. I, I know y'all talked about that re recently, like a week ago. He came up in a conversation on it anyway. Uh, the, yeah. the first time I had heard it was when he was on a British morning uh talk show with a couple other UK flat earth people, and uh, and and he was kind of talking about it, and that was the first I had ever heard about it. Um, I hadn't really delved into it much, and I I mean, it resonates a little bit out there, but it's still tougher to it's tougher to understand than just basic FE. So I don't know. I'm not going to shoot it down, but it's not you know it's not my favorite thing of all time. Why? Agreed, what is it to you? But it, um, I I wasn't actually referring to Martin Kinney's work. It's actually a story that's older than his own work. It's a sure. story that's been around for a long time, and it's the idea that we share this realm with a single consciousness that all there is basically that the story doesn't state this but it's basically this is all god experiencing god subjectively through all these little inanimate and and, and uh physical and conscious concepts or people or structures so basically this person dies in a car accident it wakes up in heaven or another realm whatever yeah. ethereal realm and it starts to have a conversation again which this uh, soul that just passed away doesn't remember having a conversation as it doesn't remember all the other conversations that it has previous with the same consciousness but that consciousness is itself reminding itself that you're eternity and every time you go back out you kind of you can hit the shuffle button and kind of go anywhere a 16th century chinese lady uh a 7th century um 
traveler, pioneer, so forth sure. and so forth and so forth. So the cosmic egg story outside of Martin Kinney would be the idea that we're all one that's having this dream of this separation, this illusion yep. and within this, that uh, the ether itself, all that's why we all share the same thoughts. Nobody really has an original idea. All ideas have always been here. Yeah, I, I I dig it. You know, we're all pieces of the whole. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a concept which has been out there for a while. I I like it. I do. Uh, again, is it my favorite? Yeah, no. I I mean, I like you know, I kind of like the 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 bigger concept of that we are all just learning fragments of uh, of God, which I know it's it's very similar to that in in some ways. <laughs> Uh, and again, not my idea. Uh, and that when we learn, we go we go back to the to the whole and and you know help nourish God or or give God something that that He didn't have before, or maybe He deliberately forgot. Uh, there was a wonderful saying uh, that kind of ties to this, which again uh, it was an argument that that happened a fictitious argument between Einstein and Stephen Hawking of all people, where. Uh, uh, Einstein, and again, one of those things I didn't understand, which he said, God doesn't play dice. And then Stephen Hawking comes down years later after Einstein had passed away and said, oh, you know, he does play dice and, you know, this big nerd argument that never, ever ends. And I think, I think Einstein was, was talking cryptically and everybody else just, the nerds didn't get it. They were thinking too literally, which is, you know, we're talking about a randomness. It's not that God doesn't play dice. God wrote dice, so he can't play it because what's the point? He knows every quantum mechanic that has to do with dice. So throwing the dice for him is meaningless, absolutely freaking meaningless. The only way he can enjoy dice is if he forgets temporarily that he wrote it. Then there's random. It's like, holy smokes, I didn't see that coming. Right. If you do that, you can, you know, because you if you make dice for the the other the beings that you've created and you see the enjoyment they're getting out of dice. I'm throwing dice just as an example. It could be anything. Oh, agreed, agreed. Um then then those beings, you know, it's like, you know, at some point it's like you I'm sure God would be like, Yeah, you know what? It's been a while. <laughs> I think I think I'd like to kind of get in on that. And I know to a, a, there was a movie that kind of touched on this vaguely. Uh it was a, it was a silly movie. Um what was it Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back? I believe where God was playing, you know, like a like a boardwalk hockey game. He'd go down to Earth every once in a while and play this game. But I don't think his memory was screwed up. But he was vulnerable. He was mortal when he played it. And that so, way, uh, she was played by a woman. Um, oh yeah, Lannis Morissette. Lannis Morissette. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, kill me. That was a great. Yeah. one. That was a great one. Yeah, it was it, dogma. Dogma wasn't it? Dogma. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it? Was it? Oh, that was dogma, wasn't it? Right. They were in it too. Jay and Silent Bob were in it too. Yeah, they were they were in it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You got you got me on that one. Um anyway, I, I always like that concept because I could, you know, not to I that I want to put myself in God's shoes, but I understand the 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 concept, which is every I again I think that's what Einstein was going for, which was again, God God doesn't play dice because God can't can't play random. He can't do random. He he can't enjoy random things because random is meaningless to, to whoever creates this place. You know, whoever creates any world to to that degree. Which is why my friends who were big game developers, the games that they created were absolutely irrelevant to them because they wrote every freaking aspect of the game. You know, the the core software, the guys that could write. You know, single single programmers. You know, now of course the games are broken up into all sorts of different developers. But if you wrote a game by yourself, you never played it. Because you knew all the, the, it's like, oh no, I know exactly what that that thing's going to do when I when I approach it. So anyway, sorry, my little ramble. Did you ever think that, or did they ever tell you that these developers put in little Easter eggs for themselves? Like, I'm going to go get this weapon under this wall over here. Sure, sure, uh, and and the 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 developers back in the day when when I was doing it back in the 90s uh, up until the late 90s, you know, they they had their own special cheat codes. They didn't have they there were cheap. Cheat codes they give to the public because they'd call. By the way, when when I did uh, tech support for this this game company, that was the mo second most popular call ever, which was uh, you know what are the are you going to release the codes? Are the codes coming out? Where where can I get the codes? It's like really because the game's only been out like three weeks. It's 
like how how are you possibly as you were giving out the konami codes the what the konami codes yeah yeah something like that you know where you know where you where you access you know the command prompt and you type in some sort of word some some nonsensical word and and something would happen you know god mode or extra lives or whatever it was but it was amazing how quickly you know people people wanted that it just drove me insane it's like the game just come came out have you no patience have you no constitution whatsoever to actually go the hero's journey spent months and months building this thing and you want to max it out in a week it's like whatever <laughs> yeah yeah, like like you said, that's why you know the great creator of this giant game of life had yeah. to put out those uh, akashic record doorways, you know, only for the select few, the ones that really want to know, that don't mind putting in the work, really right. digging in deep and pulling out the old rusty cobweb books, going to the different meetups and and uh, bunkers and hidden libraries, I assume. Yeah, and and again, tempt the um, tempt the the some of the people with the occult, you know, the deep occult. Yeah, you know, basically telling, which really essentially is a, a modern day cheat code, which is, you know, if you draw this pentagram with this circle, you sacrifice this sort of thing, you could get this. It's like, well, if it works, but it never does. As far as I know, you know, no one's all of a sudden turned into a, a, a super demon and started flying around burning down cities. So but, you never played with a Ouija board or anything? I, you know, it's funny you'd mention that. I actually owned a Ouija board at one point, <clears throat> but... I think the first time I used it, like three people died, and then I just didn't didn't have the stomach for it anymore. So, I figured, I figured yeah. sad story. no, no, I did, I did, I did own one, and I didn't really do anything with it because I didn't. I mean, how do you invite people over for a Ouija board thing, right? I'm You've got to have a certain type of friend, you know, or friends, and it's like, you know, it's like, hey, can you bring your red candles? I've got the cloaks. Yeah. Let's get Never. naked and put salt in a circle or whatever they do. <laughs> you, by the way, thank you, by the way, for mentioning that, because during this whole uh, pandemic thing, you know, be, I've, I've run out of things to watch on Netflix. And I actually started watching a show that had, it ran for 15 freaking seasons called Supernatural. And they're always trapping demons in a circle of freaking salt, always or blocking them or whatever. It's like, really? They can't go past can't go past the salt. I, I was actually always wanting somebody to tell me the science or magic science behind it all but why salt like the right all the demons like god damn it stuck here <laughs> yeah yeah they, they, these, right. <laughs> these guys always had bags of salt in their trunk and it drove me insane i'm, I'm still only on like season 12 i've, I've got to finish this thing just to see how it ends <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it is a good show man that, that's why i i, I, I missed off. it i i had no idea it's like really this show started in 2005 and ran for all this time and well i think it was the network that was on uh i never watched that network so anyway yeah some get by you i, I was i didn't watch the viking show did you ever watch the vikings i did catch the viking show yeah, yes I was to that because it ran at the same time of game of thrones and i'm a loyalist i'm like nope i'm, I'm a game of thrones guy so i'm watching vikings it looks lame and it's on a lame channel history channel and then i watched it like the other year i'm like wow this is awesome. <laughs> well, you know, it seems like when the networks got out there, there were some networks that just got lucky. You know, the right cooks in the kitchen, the right screenplay, the the right actors. You know how it goes, right? You got to have the the perfect balance of stuff. And every once in a while, a network would luck out, and they'd have one big hit. I mean, come on, look at some, um, look at uh, AMC and The Walking Dead. Man, they maxed that thing f to death. You know, no, no play on words there. They did though. They just <laughs> absolutely, yeah. they absolutely tapped that thing out. I mean, how many seasons is that thing? But it drove me nuts, and I, I don't want to digress. But the reason why I couldn't follow the series because every time I wa was watching, I was getting a headache. It's like, what is wrong with this show? Why is it bugging me so much? And it's because the writers um, started out uh, for years in soap operas. That's why. Because it, because I was wondering, it's like, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse. I don't care who's sleeping with who, right? I don't care who betrayed who. It's like, I thought you loved me. It's like, it's a zombie apocalypse. Every day is a blessing, right? You get up, you try to survive the zombies. I don't care who's sleeping with who. Why would you? <clears throat> it's like, you need food, water, guns. That's all you should care about. But that's not the hook, right? If you want the, you know, the spouse sitting on the couch with you, you got to hit them with that angle. That and I, and I've, I've run into too many women. It's like, oh, it's like, I'm so angry at Evan. You know, he shouldn't have been with Christine. It's like, 
Really? Really? You could die. Can't, can't be happy with just shooting things with arrows in the head. Really? <laughs> Whatever. Simple things in life, man. It's, it's the life. simple things. <laughs> it's the little things. It's just the little things. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me use the bathroom real quick. We'll play this little quick YouTube safe commercial. Another Bane Y special. He's just all over. Okay. I'll, I'll go to the chat room. I'm flatearthdave.com, and you're listening to Flatman X Radio. Imagine if somebody took the whole earth and cut out a small circle. Then they took that circle and wrapped it around a sphere and told you that's where you live. Now imagine that our world is a much larger expansive plane with many world ponds and they did the same thing with a small section of one pond. They cut it out and wrapped it around the sphere and said, this is where you live. This is all there is and you're not allowed to explore some. It's time to break the matrix. They are hiding your true potential. They are hiding everything. Hey everybody, this is David Weiss from FlatEarthDave.com. And you're listening to Flatman Flat X, 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 X Radio. And we're back. FMX Radio hanging out with my man Mark Sargent talking about simulation theories and the different possibilities and all the different intricate possible details but where are we how do we get here we don't know that's why we're asking mark Sargent, the man with the plan himself mr popular what's going on brother hey man um you know we we should probably delve into it real quick unless you had a, a pre-scripted thing um uh one of the reasons why i believe in in a whole virtual world simulation type thing um it's not just because that's what we want to do. You know, that's what we're rushing to. to. And by the way, we'll, we'll, I don't believe, like any other civilization, I don't believe we're going to be allowed to reach that because if we actually achieved a virtual reality, once that happens, this reality becomes more or less meaningless, right? You know, because they, they, again, people would just play, you know, this the Scott Adams thing, people would just jack in. So I don't think... The whoever created this world would allow that. I think that's I think that's beyond the rules. However, um, there are two things, real real important things that people should look at when it comes to virtual reality and and why we think why I think we're in it. Uh, one is you can reference uh, the movie The Thirteenth Floor from uh, I think it's ninety eight or nineteen ninety nine, which was supposed to run parallel to The Matrix, but they were very very different movies. Uh, the 13th Floor was based on an earlier German movie, which 1970s, bold movie by the Germans. It's like trying to do a virtual reality movie in 1975 in Germany. It's like, what were you thinking? And that was, it was based off of a 1960s book called Simulacron 3. You know, it's in the name, Simulacron Simulation. Yeah, yeah. And what they were basically saying is, uh, is that be aware that when you figure out how to create a simulation you might want to look for those things in your world right and that was a book that we that we wrote in the 60s the, a sci-fi book i think it was an american author it could have been british though so what i'm getting at is when we started creating our own games yeah uh, again i don't care if it's minecraft or gta or or warcraft or whatever it is we maximize we we do things very very efficiently and so when you're in it there's something when you're viewing when you're walking around it's called flashlight graphics meaning we only render what you're looking at because why would we render anything else that's that's dumb right and if there's something where you're a place where your character is not going to go if there's a mountain off the distance and you know the game is never going to let you go there 
is there the other is there another side of the mountain no no not at all um and and let's we'll do an old school reference to that it would be the old hollywood movies like or or parodies of it like blazing saddles where you only you know, when you build a, an old western town in the movies you only do the storefronts you know unless you're going to go into the store and then you can build out the store in but most of them are just fronts they're just walls that you can't see behind because the show is never going to take you behind it it's like okay what's the point the point is is then in the game world we're doing this and then but we you know we didn't start doing this till really till the late 1990s early 2000s but then we start we, all of a sudden we start referencing something that that was in physics a long time ago and then it was uh um refined over the years called the double slit experiment and i know some people don't like double slit. i'm slit. gonna bring that up i'm glad you did yeah it, but i'll but I'll, I'll give people the, the the short version which is the double slit experiment and and sometimes people call it particle versus wave they call it the dead cat versus you know schroeder's cat is the cat alive is it is it dead quantum quantum stuff but really what it is is they noticed that when they were when they were shooting particles at at a target that when they weren't paying attention to it when they weren't looking it, it's kind of like the old joke when you know like your friend's making a face behind your back and then you spin around he looks normal right and you turn around he's like going you know every every kid's done this right well when you're shooting particles at a target and you're not looking at the target it's not a particle anymore and we know this because when it hit the target, it acted like a wave, right? It, it acted like like it wasn't a particle at all. It was acting like a like a big glob, you know, of of not refined particle. And then it's like you turn around, you're watching it. It's like okay, I'm going to watch this time. Then it looks like a particle. Turn away, it looks it does something completely different. It's like okay, we're going to put cameras on it. Same thing. The observer changes what the reality is, and again, that made no sense to us, but since it was absolutely repeatable, science just grabbed it. It's like, well, it's a double slit experiment. It's like, yeah, but you can't even tell us why it happens. It's like, doesn't matter. It's repeatable. It's science. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but why don't you just use the word magic? Because that's what we're talking about here. Right. But, now, but once we got into advanced computers, then we kind of understood it, which was, remember what I said, like, if you're in, the, in a game, what you're looking at in front of you is being rendered exactly, you know, very, very detailed. That's what's happening here in this world. If you're not, whatever's behind you right now, what you can't see, if there's nobody else in the room, it's not being rendered <laughs> completely, which should freak you out a little bit. And what I'm getting is, the, again, simulation. If, if that's what we're doing in the game world and that's what's happening in our world, okay, then, then what's the difference? What's the difference between that simulation which we're creating and this one? And then... <laughs> You think that's enough, right? Then I'll take it one step further. This is where it gets really weird. There is something out there in Wikipedia. You can look it up. But there's some wonderful science channels on it called uh, Neuroscience and Free Will. Do you ever heard of this? I, I, you might have mentioned it before, but please. I might have mentioned it. Well, it, it bears repeating. So scientists, as you know, they do dumb stuff like anybody else. You know, the it, rednecks, they'll say, hold my beer. Hang on, I'm going to take this lawn tractor. I'm going to I'm going to go through this wall of fire. Scientists, they'll be like, hey, you know what? Let's let's just start making up crap. Let's, let's just start doing experiments that make no sense. So they hooked up electrodes to people's heads, you know, not inside, you know, just tape them onto their heads because that's what scientists do. The cliche thing. And then they have them sit in front of a computer. And they, and they have a little timer running in seconds and tenths of seconds. It's like, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to choose a number between one and nine, and you're going to hit it, right? And But also, we want you to note the decision, you know, the time it took you. So if you, like, said, okay, I'm going to choose the number four, right? Figure out how long it took you between the time you made the decision to hit the number four and hit the number four on your keypad, right? And this is where it gets weird. They, the, the computer, you know, even though they, the computer are, wasn't refined, I still don't think it's refined enough to tell you what number you chose, but it can tell you the decision that you made to take your finger and hit the key eight seconds before you made the decision. And that 
is that and and the in fact this it freaked out the scientists so much they basically just abandoned it even though it's completely repeatable all over the place because they don't know what to make of it and the answer that they that they came up with they don't like science doesn't like the term predestination predestination meaning that if if um because basically what we found is a lag in the system right it's kind of like a like a time delay like on a broadcast which is okay so so you're you're actually the computer's actually telling you know it can tell you eight seconds before you even started moving your hand even before the conscious thought of you picking a number but that's not possible right because i only decided to, to make that pick that number right now it's like oh no no, the computer knew this before you before you're going to do it and predestination it's like okay how does that relate it's possible that in the in the idea of efficiency, meaning, you know, the, people say, okay, if it's virtual reality, everyone immediately thinks, oh, it's this massive multiplayer, real-time, massive network thing, right? Not necessarily, right? And, and I'll give you a, a real-world example of that. So, uh, as you know, there's a lot of lazy kids out there, especially now. Thank God I didn't grow up in that era where who don't even not only uh, so you know they th sometimes they'll play video games all day and sometimes they won't even do that they'll just watch youtube videos of people playing video games right and there's some big channels out there making all sorts of money and all they do is play video games and then record that and put it on youtube right when the kids watch it and blow it up on their screen they're getting almost the same experience Really? In fact, it's like, I suck at this game, but I like watching this guy. He's really good. And he makes funny comments while he's doing it. And they're getting actually, you know, 99% of the experience they almost had, except they don't even have to hit their keyboard, right? Think about this, though. When they're doing that, think of the resources they're not using. They're not using a massive multiplayer game. They're not using this massive network with all this stuff. They're just watching a little MP4 video, tiny by comparison. So who's to say that this isn't some sort of, I, what, I'm, what I'm basically saying is, is a concept, again, I didn't come up with it, is that we're not in a real time thing, kind of goes into the memory blocking, we're in a pre-record, right? But because our memory was suspended, we don't know any different. We're just going through the motions, but wouldn't that make sense? So like you, let's say before you go into this world and you're talking to the genie, right? It's like, okay, so what sort of what sort of life is this going to be? Do I have any options here? It's like, oh, yeah, sure, you got lots of options. But we got this AI thing that will fill in most of the blanks for you, right? So you don't have to choose, right? You don't have to tick off the boxes like that you're going to brush your teeth three times a day, right? Well, you just click, you know, brush teeth and then, you know, select all, right? And then haircut every once in a while and you're going to get new clothes and new shoes and maybe. And then it's like you, you just pick the, the more important bits. Okay, do I get married? Who do I date? You know what happens, but you know all all the highs and the, the main highs and lows of your life, and then once you set that up, why would it be real time at all? You it's it's all it's all a pre record. You you don't know. You go into it, and so again, you you think you are making decisions. And sorry, I, I don't want to ramble, but let me end this part with this. There was a wonderful line that is almost completely overlooked in the Matrix. The movie, the second one, as a matter of fact, when Neo's in the park talking to the Oracle just before Agent Smith shows up with a whole bunch of his friends, you know, and, and starts beating on him. And she was talking about how, you know, you're going to have to make the choice to either save Trinity or not and blah, blah, blah. And he goes and uh, or no, no, she didn't say the word choice. She's she goes, you know, you will have to, you know, decide. Right. And he goes, I can't make that choice. He goes, she goes, no, she goes. You've already made the choice. You're not here to make the choice. You've already made it. You're just here to understand it, which means, th again, he's living the the secret thing behind the matrix was it was all it was all a pre-record, which is why you know when he got to the end, you know he when he was talking to the architect, it's like, oh yeah, I've met your six previous versions. You might as well said his six previous lives, right? You know, on the screen. You know, this is the sixth time you've run through this. You know, this thing. And, but there were oh. small intricate details just for the people in the comment section that uh for taking what you're saying as verbatim there's it, it's not just um a one directional loop this loop is intricate you get to decide all the pre-recorded storylines that's been set for you right would sure you, would you agree with that that i, and this I would it's a hyperloop it's a so, such a highly sophisticated 
simulation game that we yeah. can't create this yet. You know, we can do these small little open world MMOs, you know, sure. But I mean, we're talking about something we can't do. We probably won't be able to do in our lifetime. You no. know, so on this scale, I mean, this is an amazing uh, realm existence fractal reality we live in and we're just yeah. trying to use words um and terminologies like mark to kind of better correspond what's going on to give it make it a little bit more relatable but this yeah. is the best that we can do what yeah. we're entertaining is the idea of this being such an energetic and and open wide super ai system that all these storylines you still get to pick you're still in control of the video game you're the main character yeah. but yeah all the people you meet were predestined now if you decided to go with them that was on you you could have left them alone you still have a certain degree of free will here free will here or yes yeah. what's the point of being here you're not going to learn anything yeah and and to that point you know the movies I, even though i'm a bit, huge fan of time travel movies uh, anything that's tied to it, I, I I love I love all of them. There's there's a little theme that they the writers kind of paint themselves into a corner, but but the best term I ever heard was you know as far as you don't show people the future because once you see it, you're gonna change it. You know I know there's some people it's like oh time is like a river and you can't change it. And I've seen all the what was it uh, Final Destination that series, but but it's true. You know you don't show it's people true. the future because exactly right if they you know if you see it or or one real quick thing is that if you had a predest you know everything was predetermined right once you're in it you're going to change your mind it's like oh yeah by the way to get to this point right from a to a to b to get to this point you're going to have to break your arm once you're going to lose a family member you know uh, you know and and there's going to be these down th downsides and you once you're in it's like nah i really really don't want to do that right <laughs> It's like it's tough. That's that's how it goes. So beforehand, it's like, oh no, no, this is the hero's journey. You're gonna do this. You know, you're gonna have your highs and lows, but you're gonna get there. But once you and you make those decisions ahead of time, not in real time, and you're not, you're never shown what's gonna happen, if possible, because again, you would probably make changes to it. So anyway, agreed, agreed. I would if somebody gave. Oh me yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and to, I'm sorry. One more thing, which is you know I I've you know I never got married or had kids, so I've had a lot of time to reflect uh, over the decades. And when I look back at my early life, you know, everyone does this. It's like wow, if I you know if I had no, known then what I know now, and if I could make changes. But think about that real hard, because every time I did, I realized the chain link of my life, you know, leading up to this point. I, I I was I realized, man, it's either all or nothing. I can't change one little thing and still end up where I am now. It's all interconnected that much. I mean, going all the way back to kindergarten, for me, I, there's so little I could change. I mean, aside from you know what you had for dinner, you really can't. I would not mess with it. So if you guys get a time travel machine, don't screw around. No, eat the you same like dinner. Too. Just eat the same dinner just to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> wrong oh, no. I mean, wrong night. Uh, get, again, the, yeah, just to be safe. But hey, uh, you know what? Uh, anyone has any doubts? Look at the movie. And I'm not. A, I'm not an Ashton Kutcher fan. Butterfly. But the butter. But the butterfly effect. Watch the uh, the director's cut of that. It's very, very different from from the original. And the ending is very, very different. Way darker. Ain't that the darker one? We don't. Yeah, it's it the out. darker one. Well, you know, what? I'll I'll give a spoiler. He doesn't make it in the director's cut. He dies because, and, and he wills himself to do it. You know, it's like, nope, you know what? The best option here is if I was never born, never which born. again, completely contradicts. It's a wonderful life from, from a long time ago. We're just like, no, 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 you absolutely want to be born. Otherwise, you know, Bedford Falls completely collapses, but whatever. Yep. That's why I believe that there's definitely steadfast protocols in place not unlike the story, my favorite one that you've told in your own variation um, of the Tower of Babel. And oh. the very first uh, simulated humans that are here that were very, uh, I guess, aware of their surroundings and the fact that they were encapsulated and they wanted out. And they didn't like the fact that they were being ignored. And a lot of people feel like that today, that we're being ignored. Yeah, I, I, I hope that long time from now when we're not here anymore i get to watch that you know i i get to to watch the the film on that where the tower of babel not only were they completely aware but they were unified on top of it it was a unified it was almost a utopia on the ground 
really. You know, a group of a group of human beings that were were completely soul minded. It's like, oh yeah, I know exactly what's happening here. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're we're going for we're going for the top, guys. <laughs> we're going to see if we can make it. Can you imagine again, God looking down, going, you uh, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not working out really well at all you know and you know so, who, who, his right hand people it's like I told you, eh, pretty, I told pretty you. sure make it taller make the fence taller <laughs> yeah yeah pretty sure they're gonna make it it's like okay languages let's do it let's scatter <laughs> scatter scatter get that tower out of here yeah it, it was a very short-lived civilization but i'm sure it was spectacular i ain't gonna lie i want to make that movie so bad so oh tower bad. of babel yeah, like, like I know, you, right? Nobody's done it yet. They keep making Noah's Ark because that's Noah's the greatest Moses story ever. And Moses, they do Noah's Ark and Moses are. The two yep, Noah's Ark and ones. They're great Freaking. stories, but come yeah. on, hell, you I know, I know. Parting, parting the Red Sea. Yeah, I get it. It's cool. Legs, yeah, yeah. But I mean, oh, come on. Now, now they've done what, what was the last one they did? Gods of Egypt. I mean, you oh, had the Russell. My goodness. White, yeah. oh, whitewashing boys. <laughs> yeah, I mean Ru Russell Crowe's Noah's Ark was interesting. I, but... I, didn't, I didn't mind that one though. I didn't. I didn't mind that one. I didn't. I thought it was all right. It was anyway, all right. if you guys know what we're talking about, the it's it's one of the shortest stories. I think it's the shortest story in literature, which is the Tower of Babel from Genesis, which basically says, and again, it's so overlooked that the first civilization that God created, uh, um, was you know was very unified and decided they were going to build a bridge to heaven. And uh, that's actually absolutely off limits. So you can't do that. And so God decided to, you know, he didn't wipe them out, but he, he basically it's like, okay, we're going to divide you up into a whole bunch of languages and we're going to scatter you to the freaking winds. And yeah, that tower's not going anywhere. So I think, I think he wiped it out because if there were any remnants of that tower, uh, they'd still be around. You you think uh, along with the languages probably went another little memory reset? Would we maybe call this the first reset? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Why why wouldn't you? Uh, you know, memory. I, I love I love the human title. mind. I write that down. The what? Yeah, <laughs> the you should. Reset, the uh, the first reset is uh, is a is a great concept. The human mind is very pliable, and. Uh, it, what I what I love about it more than anything, especially when it comes to memory, and we haven't we haven't gotten it quite there yet, which is electrochemically, our memories a, a memory if it's strong enough is almost identical to the re, to the to real time, and what I mean by that is uh, there was an experiment you probably heard about it years ago. It was a, it was a famous experiment where they took uh, kids. And uh, they want them to shoot free throws in baskets, right? And so they took three groups. And one, it's like, okay, you're going to practice free throws 10 minutes a day, every day. We're going to see what happens, you know, in, in a couple of weeks. Second group, you're not going to do anything. <laughs> you're just going to go and have lunch, right? And the third group, you're just going to sit here in this gym and you're going to think about shooting free throws for 10 minutes a day. It's all you're going to do. And what was amazing was uh, you, that the group, you know, of course, the, the, the group that shot the free throws, they were the best, you know, because they were actually physically doing it. Uh, the control group was absolutely spot on, no different. But the, the group that, sh that just thought about shooting free throws 10 minutes a day, they got considerably better. And what where that what that ties into is that because again the experience electrochemically was was setting in even though it was a pure one, but a, a strong memory can also you can take the negative side of it. So when when people you know you always heard those running jokes about Vietnam vets hearing helicopters, you know and, and stuff like that and and seeing things it's like no 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 they act turns out they actually were hearing helicopters. The memory was so strong that when they had a flashback. Uh, electrochemically steal a line from Morpheus, you know, it's no different. You know, if, if memory is just electrochemicals, then, you know, and real time is just electrochemicals, can it be manipulated and can it be simulated? Yeah, you bet it can. And repressed. Uh, look at the movie, um, not to get to too much pop culture references, but uh, Dark City uh, with um, Rufus Sewell and, no, no, is that right? No, maybe it is. But it doesn't matter. Keith really Keith yeah. Kiefer Sutherland was in it, yeah, where yeah. He, every night they reset the population's memory. 
every freaking night. And one night you may be poor. Next night you might be rich. One, you know, you change professions. And they would just be constantly playing with the human mind because it was an alien species, trying to to figure out what what ticked. And during that process, they almost perfected the the it was all chemicals. It was all electrochemical. And and they didn't really get into it too much, you know. The 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 you know they didn't want to bore the 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 public with with the how they pulled it off. But that's really a, in essence what we're talking about here. We haven't gotten there yet. I don't know. There's probably some government programs that are working on it. But uh, yeah, no, I've actually heard recently that there's certain I don't know what the technical term, but hidden legislation that actually suppresses. Um, you know, certain technologies from coming out. And since we all have access to the same ether, they can't, there's no way of stopping from people habitually across the plane, randomly figuring out how to pull water out of the air. Usually right. around every 10 years, that seems to come back around in my lifetime. That's been happening. I, sure. uh, and water, uh, cars running off of water. I've ridden in a couple, uh, two of them actually. One of them was uh, the buggy from, Stanley Myers here in Florida that passed away in the nineties had a complete yeah. blood bug that ran off of water and as well as, um, a wireless energy and the various, um, ways of doing it. There's more than one of pulling energy right out of the air and the ground itself. But there's this hidden legislation. They either come with a big bag of money because most people, you know, poverty stricken and that's what they're doing it for anyway is capital gains. So they usually take the money, they take the patent, it goes in the locked door, boom 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 bada bing and then if you don't want to pay for it well then uh, every time across the board you have a mysterious heart attack or you shoot yep. yourself in the back of the head <laughs> yeah when it comes and i i i don't want to play devil's advocate here necessarily but i i get that which is when a civil kind of like why why the flat earth was suppressed you know, in Antarctica and everything, uh, you know, and why, why NASA, you know, had to, had to be faked and all that stuff. And that is once a civilization reaches a certain level, not, not like the, the, the Tower of Babel people, you know, if you go the full 5,000 years, which, you know, we have pretty much unbroken, uh, you can't introduce something that, that has the potential of, of radically disrupting everything. Uh, a, a great example, of course, would be a water engine, or um, my favorite would be the unified field engine, which is, UFO, you know, right, basically <clears throat> UFO. Yeah, UFO. Yeah, UFO tech, which is, and and I get that because be, people, if people don't quite get it, it's like if you all of a sudden allowed people to create uh, a unified field engine, which would basically, you know, turn cars into UFOs. <laughs> Uh, it would, I mean, everything would just be, I mean, economies would, would completely collapse because you would only need one vehicle for everything right now. You know, we have cars, we have trucks, we have planes, we have submarines, we have all, all sorts of stuff, trains and, uh, the UFO replaces all that. You don't need runways. You don't need train tracks. You don't need automobile factories necessarily because you know, the, uh, car, you know, the pieces wouldn't wear out. You know, you don't have a million car parts anymore. And, and putting that into civilization later, which I, I think earlier civilizations got to, got to do it, you know, but, but ours definitely not. Ours was slowed way, way down. So, you know, when the powers of B see it, that's like, you <laughs> could have happened. Every once in a while, there's an anomaly. Someone's like, oh, wow, I found, I figured out a way to create a new heavy element. You know what? This could power a unified field engine. You know, he types that in somewhere. And then some computer red light goes off, and it's like, yeah, get some people over there. We need to. And again, you could you could do it the nice way, I suppose. You could offer them. Uh, I, I think most of the time, for karma's sake, they offer the carrot and the stick simultaneously. It's like, look, we'll we'll make you as rich as you want. Give us all the plans, all the research. Uh, we're going to, you know, we'll put you on a desert island somewhere. You don't ever talk about this. We'll be monitoring you if you talk about it. It won't go well. You'll disappear. So, you'll disappear. Yeah, you'll disappear. But other guys, they they kind of leave alone. Um, like the guy that built Coral Castle. Oh, down yeah. In, I'm going, yeah. going there. Me and my homies, me, Austin, and Troubling, who were just here, we're planning on a trip. I'm going there, actually. Yeah, that was a quiet... It got away with it because it was some years ago, you know, way before the media became this, this Goliath that is now. Uh, you know, the, the Coral Castle... You know, it was built, and I'm sure the early agents were like looking at it going, oh, he's not really 
hurting anybody. So let's right. just yeah, let him not making money. Yeah, he's doing it for his wife, supposedly. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a cool little thing he did, but you could not do that now. You couldn't you couldn't go. I mean, it, even as late as as early as or as late as like the eighties, you couldn't do that and have a news team anywhere near you. Because because there'd be you know especially nowadays like TMZ would at least be with ladders they'd be like taking pictures of what the hell's going on oh yeah no doubt um so the question is oh, did do the drones you just drone right over it you there you go what's going on did he did he die and take his secret with him or did he die and uh like Nikola Tesla. You know, when when Nikola Tesla died, you know, I I absolutely believe the stories that that agents just went in and cleared out his whole his whole office. But but I believe he was something. I I believe Nick. You want to know the only guy I ever if I ever had to accuse somebody of of getting some of the cheat codes, it would have been Tesla, because yeah, the stuff. Nine. Yeah, the stuff he was messing around with was way way out of bounds i mean like 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 an earthquake machine that was the size of a pack of cigarettes it wasn't a pack of cigarettes it wasn't it wasn't what he could do it was what he was doing it with right and like like an early ray gun that he showed off to you know to guys at the white house where he like blew away a sheep <laughs> it's like we can't let that out it's like it's like you can't so just just do your do your electricity stuff and then again when he did I still love the story, and again, if I have to go back and watch it, I'd love to. Uh, the 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 story, it's it's pretty good. Which was, you know, he was a big believer in the uh, wireless transmission of electricity. Yeah. It's like we don't need outlets; let's just set up wireless things, and it would and it'd be kind of cool. But when they were going to shut him down, you know, that big tower in Colorado, which he was experimenting at, the rumor was is that just for the hell of it, he 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 overloaded. Uh, and and fire, you know, used it as a like a makeshift weapon, and, and he was the guy that created the Tungus, Tunguska blast over in, oh, uh, in Russia, that, which would be kind of cool. I mean, just sent it off into the distance, and it's like, well, wherever it lands, it lands. And uh, you know, I don't. <laughs> who knows? Who knows where he was actually aiming? But uh, yeah, that that if anyone died with a lot of secrets, it was it was freaking that guy. He was uh, he was a cool dude. And now we're stuck with the fake Elon test. Oh, you had to bring him up, didn't you? I mean, yeah, hey, I man, I had to get on that conversation y'all started last night, man. I got uh, really lucky that night. <laughs> I have never, uh, I mean, granted, there's been some puppets over the years, some media puppets and government puppets. I have never seen, uh, I mean, I, I think I'm more aggravated because, again, uh, the, the line from um, Armageddon, the Bruce Willis line, when he was yelling at NASA. It's like this is the best you could come up with, this, this, this is it, Elon. You're really? <laughs> He's yeah. You're NASA for God's sakes. Yeah, uh, yeah. E Elon's the guy, and uh, they're they're. I have never seen anyone so forcibly shoehorned into a larger than life thing to where there's nothing. I mean, my uncle. We had a family reunion here a couple of weeks ago, and my uncle thinks the man basically walks on water. And, 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 and my uncle, Grant, he's not, he's not bright, but, but, but I had to, and like, I saw the look on his face. I go, you know, he didn't start Tesla. Right. And he looked at me like he didn't know. He absolutely did not know this. It's like, yep, that's what he does. He takes credit for stuff after the fact, you know, he bought, you know, he buys it or with our government's help, he buys stuff. And I mean, I, thank God they, they, they completely removed him, you know, for a while people thought he started PayPal. It's like, oh no, we can't have him start everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now and and I joked with Karen from time to time. I said, you watch, you watch. If nothing happens and we don't blow ourselves up in the next few years, you watch in a few years, there will be kids. You'll ask kids on the street, hey, who started Twitter? Guarantee his name will just keep coming up again. Oh yeah, Elon started Twitter. It's like, no, no, Twitter had been around for a long time. And he just bought it. But again, that's we're we're all about the current stuff. You know, the 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 movie, um, the founder. You know, about the Ray Kroc story. I just watched that yesterday. Finally, for the first time, that was brilliant movie. He gets away. But he gets away with everything. He, he gets. Won. He got away with he everything. Won. 
And he even took credit for, you know, the, the whole reason, sorry, I don't want to digress too much, but I got to get this point <laughs> out there. The whole reason, you guys, that McDonald's even exists in the form that it does today was because of straight up blackmail. Meaning, um, what the problem was is that nobody was really franchising anything back then and he couldn't do quality control, right? A McDonald's in Baltimore versus a McDonald's in, in New Orleans versus one in California. Uh, yeah. He couldn't keep the standards. And all of a sudden, his attorney just throws out this idea, which just changed everything forever. It's like, no, no. All you do is you buy the land, you lease them the building, and then you hold it over their heads like blackmail. They will do whatever you say, and they, they will they will do exactly. They will make the food exactly the same, exactly how you want it to. And in the process, you will become, you will be gaining real estate every time. And it's like, yeah, McDonald's is the biggest holder of commercial real estate in the world because of that. They hold huge amounts of assets, mostly in property. And it's and it was brilliant. But the point was is that by the end, the Ray Kroc took all the credit. It's like, no, it was the McDonald's brothers, hence the name. Yeah. And then he was so. I, I get it. Capitalism and competition. There are certain people that, uh, you know, they don't, there are certain coaches that they don't want to win. They want a complete blowout. They want to shut out. And what I thought was mean was he didn't want any evidence of the McDonald's around. And because in their contract, they said, okay, we want to keep our original restaurant. That's all we want. Humble, right? It's like, you paid us millions of dollars. You can, you can turn McDonald's into a, a behemoth. We want one restaurant. You know what he did? He put one of his right across the street and he ran him out of business. That's damn. That. They didn't say that part in the movie. Yeah, no, they didn't. It's cold. It's oh, like wow. to where it's like, I don't even want, it's like that guy. I don't even want that original restaurant anymore. I don't want a memory of the McDonald's around. I don't want the brothers mentioned. I don't want anything. And to this day, people are like, oh yeah, Ray Kroc, plaques and everything everywhere. Duh. Wow. Me insane. Anyway, sorry. Back to yeah, Elon Musk. It will end up even worse than that be, before it's over. I mean, he's he takes credit for SpaceX, uh, even though it is a completely government-backed uh, program. Uh, he'll he's going to take credit for Twitter, even though he was he was sued. He was forced to buy it, forced by Twitter because you you can't if you're a billionaire. Word to the wise: if you're a billionaire, you can't just casually say, "Oh yeah, I totally buy this stock for fifty dollars a share." Totally do it. Right, because apparently, when you have so much money and you can influence the market, it's like that's legally binding. If you say that during an interview, and they called him on, it's like, "Yep, you said it. You have to buy it." It's like, "What? <laughs> I do?" It's like, "Yeah, you do." And and his lawyers actually said, "Dude, you could spend millions of dollars and years for what? It'd be cheaper to just buy it, and then you can just destroy it, <laughs> or start do whatever you want." Oh God, I hate that guy probably going to destroy it so so you don't think he has a chance against uh the, the android himself zuckerberg i i i he has the side i I, I, I i i almost develop aneurysms even thinking about it because i it is it is it is bread and circuses it is idiocracy i mean the fact that you've got two billionaires one bored out of his mind zuckerberg's just the whole thing started because Zuckerberg has been bored and it's like, I'm going to do martial arts in my spare time. Why the hell not? What else do I got to do? Right. Even though I, that guy, I, the, the social network, the movie, you guys want, want to watch that. By the way, Zuckerberg did not start Facebook. He, he was the, the reluctant winner in the giant lawsuit that was about Facebook. Everybody said it was the Winklevoss twins. That's, that's who got it. They should have probably taken over, but whatever. They got millions and millions and millions. So who cares? But, but he, so some, the, the promoter, what's his face on the WWE or, or ultimate UFC or whatever that oh, promoter, Dana I can't White, remember, Dana White. he, 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 you know, he came up with this idea, you know, casually it's like, Hey, you know, you know, probably asked Zuckerberg first, like, Hey, who would you, would you fight Elon? And it's like, yeah, I'd fight Elon. Like so immediately he calls Elon's people. It's like, Hey, would you fight Zuckerberg? And I, you know, one of, I mean, like, for example, Zuckerberg only weighs 145 pounds, right? He's oh, wow. small. Wow. But then again, Elon is 230 pounds of pudge, right? You know, I, I, you can say what you want. I don't care what, what pick, I mean, if he does a big montage and he gets in shape, great. But 
two months ago, he was in the back of a boat, yeah. and he he looked like a white beluga that was vertical. It, that he was oh, just marshmallow a, man status. He was a freaking marshmallow, <laughs> and so. And, and but but I mean the the weight difference you know weight classes is like no 145 versus 230. Uh, I mean if they get into a wrestling match, Zuckerberg is going to have a hard time. Oh, He's going to have to. But what sort of fight are we talking about here? And who's going to insure it? I mean, you're going to talk about like kicks to the head? Are we are we talking about like this could happen? Well, I figured they were just going to send their clones out there anyway, and they were just going to send in the audience. <sighs> like my yes. million dollar clone is going to beat your android clone. And even though I am not a big believer in the hype machine, when Dana White said, you know, he said, oh, this will be the greatest boxing match of all time. <laughs> uh, and you think to yourself, that is a ridiculous statement, right? We've heard this before. However, nowadays, considering how everything's wired in, this could be the most watched, viewed, money-generating I don't even want to call it an athletic event. Semi fight. It's just two nerds fighting. I, I mean, we're not talking about the pinnacle of of any sort of sport. An athletic out, yeah. Exactly. No, no. I mean, I haven't seen Elon do anything athletic ever. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I don't know what you're hoping for. I say, I, it's I, a celebrity death death match. Uh, you know, live. Whatever. It's just. <laughs> but but again, it will it will let's put it this way given what the paul brothers have done in the last two years with with this you know the fact that logan is now uh um a, a full-fledged member of the wwe yeah and and jake well at one point was ruining boxing because he was paying people hundreds of thousands of dollars to lose you know and, and then finally had one of them won but that was just to screw up the odds you know the but it's like yeah get retired athletes pay them whatever it is half a million up front and then a, per, a huge percentage of the gate and and then have them lose and you, then you make money on the side bets or whatever you're doing and and uh yeah it's just yeah, that was guys. a mayweather that that he lost that one. you ain't going to you ain't he don't have enough money to pay floyd mayweather to take a no <laughs> no no. So again, so anyway, to, to that point, you know, I, and again, there were people every freaking time, you know, going for the pay-per-view for those. And it's like, all right, well, if they're willing to pay to, to watch fake boxing, they'll probably watch to pay, you know, a, a nerd grudge match. Could it be possible? I mean, just to me, they have so much money and, and yes, the possibility of just them just being bored, but there's also, you know, that hidden, rumors that go around of course online that you know i keep my ear to the ground that they're being orchestrated to do this because they're masters because we, we look at the, these public figures as the oh well, nobody can tell them what to do they're filthy rich they sign paperwork they hire people they fire people they're on podcasts yep. they have a lot of uh, status but you know there's those out there the super occult the super elite as it were who uses right. even these billionaires as toys themselves yes they yes also these get these guys are not new world order elites. And I have said this many times that I, I, I've had people, you know, roll their eyes, you know, non-truthers. Oh, but, but I say, look, the first rule of power has never, ever changed. Never, ever, never going to change, which is first rule of power is stay hidden. You cannot be a puppet and a puppet master at the same time. And the reason why you don't do it, uh, and I don't know if, if Napoleon was a pretty quotable guy, actually. I don't know if it was him or another guy. He said, you can't be overthrown if they don't know who you are. Meaning you can overthrow kings and presidents. You know, if you're in the public eye, you ha immediately have a target on your back. However, if you were the, the, the guy behind the, the, the stage, you know, with the strings, they don't know who you are. You know, that's why, again, you, you can't be both. You can't be the, it's, it's the blessing and the curse of being the, the super elite. I mean, you can't be. Can't be so, Darth Maul and Emperor Palpatine. No, no, you can't. You can't. You can't do it both, uh, because and you wouldn't want to. You know, there's I, there's no even temptation. You know what the masses are capable of. It's like no, they can storm the castle. They can burn down the house. They can they can run through the 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 countryside with pitchforks and torches. They will find you if they know who you are. You do not want to be recognizable. So being anonymous, that's actually a very very good thing. So when we talk about you know Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, and it's like I. It, I, it's like those are the publicly rich. 
It's like, oh, you know, they're the most, you know, the richest men in the world. It's like publicly rich men in the world. There are people in the world that don't even bother looking at their bank accounts because they can overthrow economies. You know, we're talking 12 digits or higher. You know, what money, ridiculous, what to money to where money is irrelevant. It just, it mean, the term is meaningless to them. I mean, come on. Like, even, you know, Gates is new money, right? Zuckerberg's new money. Elon is really green new money by, by comparison. Even the Rothschilds going back in the day. Remember, we know who the Rothschilds are. Though even those guys were fairly new money, and that there they go back a couple hundred years, barely, you know, before they before they became huge. What about the Windsors, like the Queen of England's family? Well, How again, royalty, but royal the the public royalty. So the British royal family, do they have influence? Yes. Do they get to sit in on meetings? Sure. Do I think they're the top of the heap? Nah. Now again, they know who that they, they're public. They're in the public eye. I mean, uh, not not to go down a, a different road, but um, when when people talk about Diana, for example, right, and and people say, "Oh, you know, why why was she you know taken out?" Right, not a big secret uh, that she was. But for me, I said, "Well, because, simple reason. The simple reason is she, rep. You know, she was a black eye on the monarchy." They, the longer she stayed out there, the worse it got because people loved her. For whatever reason, she was like the Marilyn Monroe freaking royalty. Everybody just loved her wherever she went. And eventually, I got I have my own little theory behind this. Eventually, you remember what was going to come up, which was going to be her son's weddings. And remember, for when it comes to the royalty, everything has to be perfect all the time, right? Everything has, you don't want diana at this freaking at the very minimum you don't want her showing up at the wedding why because all the cameras would be on her constantly it's like oh he's here there's her ex-husband there's you know the the new wife and all this and it's like no no it's in and, and so you take care of it early you don't want to wait you definitely don't want to wait till like that year it's like oh then she dies in a tunnel no 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 you take it you take care of that early so sorry and that makes sense. I didn't think about it. I heard how awesome she was because during my mom's generation, apparently she was a big deal. She she was like a, a princess of the people. She yeah. went out and did things and was very active. But yeah, that makes sense too. They she was to be seen a certain way. But yeah, once she broke away, she was. I mean, she was. She came into herself. I mean, yes, she was a, a big wallflower when she first got married. But it, in time, she realized when the public latched on to her, it's like, oh no. I'm, I'm the stuff. I'm all that in a bag of chips, and and she knew it, and she was using that to her advantage. And uh, 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 Prince Charles, right? Charles, he uh, he was just he couldn't even begin to compare. You know, they do public functions. They don't want to talk to him. They don't want to talk to anyone. They want to talk to her. You know, she she had she had that it thing. You know, the that that oh, yeah. on camera oh, yeah. thing that that people loved, and they hated they hated that, and. And it, well, they thought it would kind of go away after the divorce, and it did not. Paparazzi were on her constantly. She could not go anywhere. She was always freaking mobbed. And uh, again, I, 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 you know, the fan, it was probably easier for them to, to get. Anyway, sorry, back, back on point. The royal family can do some things, but they can't do everything. So it, the royal's extended family, maybe. It's probably going to be, though, some um, really, really old families in Europe. Right. You know, uh, possibly awesome. possibly i mean I, i'm not going to discount it but really really old families families going back a, a long long time would this uh, not make sense to you though i mean you know reptilians aside but yeah certain humans having certain information of certain maybe locations of fountain of use or something like that where they do seem to have or at least act like they have these longevity lives where they set things in motion motion where they wouldn't see the results until decades later possibly uh i've always been skeptical of the the fountain of youth thing though because the only way you could pull that off again i got a lot of time on my hands to to think the only way you could pull that off is if you could change your appearance and we've we've seen that talked about in different movies you know the 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 movie highlander going all the way you know highlander a guy an immortal trying to live through time and and you know he'd have to die every so often and, and move cities and but but he looked always the same you you it'd be they'd be hard pressed to do it now 
if if you were trying to go for some sort of immortality, uh, you'd have to you'd have to alter your looks to do it because paintings would give you away, uh, sketches would give you away. You could always uh, say that that was your great grandfather. They did that in a new Marvel movie, The Eternals. Well, there you go. You could, yeah, you you might be able to pull it off, but if if you were going to do it again, you'd have to stay hidden. You couldn't be in the public eye. So, like, you'll you'll never see. It's so like Aleister Crowley would have loved to have stained a mortal. You know, Aleister Crowley, who I'm pretty sure is um, uh, Karen B's uh, paternal grandfather. <laughs> you heard so, it here first. <laughs> pretty sure. Well, I mean, look at the tattoos. I mean, it, it's pretty damn close. So, um, <laughs> no, probably not. I'm not saying she was related to Ozzy Osbourne either. Oh, no. So, um, but 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 he died right he and he if anyone wanted to live forever and tried every freaking ritual he could come up with it would have been alistair crowley now again is it i'm not going to say that there isn't some european family out there that's figured that out but if you were going to do that you're not leaving the castle very often because you know or if you are you're you know you're, you're not going to go to the same same shoe repair place Right, everyone, you know, just you're not gonna walk around town because an old guy is gonna be like, "I saw you 50 years ago, yeah, you and you, be. you look the same." Who are you know? And then it turns into a sci-fi movie. So, is is it possible? Sure, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna discount it. But as far as the public eye, people know because you, you can't. Again, you can't have both. A movie star, movie stars cannot, you know, stay that way forever. Politicians can't stay that way forever, well, and so on. And Andrino Chrome. But yeah, forever though. Still though. Yeah, you're, 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 okay. Yeah. Do I think? A, I almost think that Adrenochrome. Do I think Adrenochrome? The the concept is real. Sure. You bet. Why? Well, it, it sounds feasible, right? You know the blood chemistry, right? You know, get get somebody jacked up. I mean, come on. We we talked about help. Every tenth vampire movie goes into that. It's like their blood tastes so much better, you know, <laughs> when they're scared, you know. But I, they don't sound like uh, oh, that was perfect. That was perfect. No, no, no. People say I sound like Russian Dracula when I when I try to do that. I mean, I like blah blah movie. blah. <laughs> the um, uh, but but do I does it have any? I mean, what are you getting out of it? Because if you're you think you're getting life extension out of it. I haven't seen it yet. You know what I mean? I've watched I've I've watched a lot of celebs over the years and and this adrenochrome would not be a new concept, right? This is something that's probably going back a while. Now, do you get really, you know, could it be a a a, a pineal gland type thing where when you hit it it's like the ultimate drug and you get to see things that other people couldn't see, you know, possibly but I think for a lot of people, you know, for I think if any celeb or power person that buys into it, I think their expectations are, I think it's hyped up too much. You know, it's it's kind of like a, a, a snake oil type thing. Not not literal snake oil. I mean, like, it's, it's kind of like a, it, it's like a con for the super rich. Meaning what they're told they're going to get out of it, you know, kind of like the placebo effect. It's like, oh yeah, you'll you'll be rejuvenated and you'll live longer. You do this, and they take it. But maybe again, maybe there's also the side effect, like you see in some movies. Well, it's like, well, unless you take it every so often, you know, you Under you'll you'll moon and stuff. Yeah, yeah if, if the ritual isn't done exactly right, you know, you'll you'll fall back into whatever. I know that people say, oh no, Celine, you know, she was into it, and and Paul so Rudd. Paul Rudd. I mean, how do you explain Paul Rudd? Okay, <laughs> law of average. I'm a big fan of law of averages. You are going to run into people. There are people that are photogenic, and then there's people like me. There are people that age really, really well, and most people don't. I mean, come on, the Dick Clark syndrome, right? But, it, but think, right? Dick Clark looked young for a long time, but he also made sure his hair was absolutely black, you know, and and uh, he he kept a good skin regimen, and it's like, oh, and he kept his, you know, he his weight never fluctuated at all uh you could say the same thing about um modern day you want to talk about uh, tom cruise tom cruise held on to that look for as long as humanly possible and only now only is it now. starting only now is it starting to fray you know it with, like with anything you know we all have our favorite shirt our favorite jeans and you can keep try to keep it pristine as long as you want but sooner or later the wash and dry is going to wear on it and you're gonna have a a bad day where it's like, oh boy, these things are certain. So yeah, Tom, 
you've seen the cruise, you know, the Tom Cruise picks recently. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, when he's when he's off, most of the time, again, it's it's a hair dye. Um, so again, I dri sorry, short version. Do I do I think people take a group adrenochrome? Sure. Do I think they're taking it for the wrong reasons? Probably. And do I think they're going to suffer horribly <laughs> because of the karma they're generating? <laughs> from from the whole adrenochrome process oh yeah yeah and and again i don't want to i don't want to downplay this too much but i i gotta get this out which is don't forget and you, i know we all think it's, it's a, a you know the, there's atrocities that happen out there and it's really really horrible but don't forget that you know old tricks are the best tricks and adrenochrome because most of it's from children it's just really an extension of what child prostitution and child prostitution has been around forever right i mean come on go back to the the early stories of rome child prostitution was a thing it never you know yes when we got into more civilized society and refinement and we were realizing that you know young people can be you should not be you know you, you you'll break them you know if, if you if you do things to them but it is it is not a it's not a brand brand new thing and so is it still horrible yeah it's awful so anyway there you go I like it. I like it. Well, Mark, we're coming up on the second, towards the end of the second hour. This has been a fantastic conversation. I've definitely uh, traded some great ideas with you. I hope a lot of the audience was able to kind of keep up with our weirdness that we go down. We um not not everybody likes going down this whole rabbit trail all the time, but you know some of us do. Some of us like to entertain these possibilities. And I thought there was nobody better than you to share this idea with. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there anything else uh, you need from me? Um, let's just ask people in the comment section why we got you here for these last five, ten minutes or so. Uh, anybody in the comments have any questions that maybe I didn't ask? Maybe something you want to know from Mark personally why he's here. Um, oh, thanks, Jaron. I just seen a super chat. I ah, love you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you and everybody else, all my awesome supporters out there. Uh, this has only been like my second week doing this, and it's been pretty awesome just getting to know everybody that's much better. Been able to reach out to you and do something with you now, finally, after all this time. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Again, it was it was great seeing you at uh, Flattoberfest. I would imagine you will be attending the uh, the big Vegas blowout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is going to, it is <laughs> going to be awesome. And by the way, I'm I'm going to start doing uh, anyone that's thinking of going. I'm going to start doing public service announcements for the Vegas thing. Uh, I've got to remind people that Vegas is different from any other uh, venue that we've done. In that beforehand, remember I'm the opening act. I got to mention this, right? So I'm I'm going to be opening the show and beforehand you know the people would you know the bars would close at two and, and people would roll in and you know we start the program just before lunch right well in vegas the bars don't close so i ask people to be responsible so like set something in fact i'm, I'm thinking about if david weiss is listening i'm thinking of having like him do like a broadcast on his apps like one o'clock a.m it's like start thinking about going home <laughs> go to your room yeah, yeah. don't have another eight beers you know because I can see people at you know four in the morning. It's like, what time is it? Is it Mark? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's Mark coming down the oh. elevator. Yeah, it it would be so. I'm dang it. Please, I I you know I hate the ads that say drink responsibly. Freaking drink responsibly this time because Vegas, Vegas is a is just a giant city of temptation. That's all it is. So please be careful. Yes, that's right. And that comes from both of us. Please take care of yourself. You know, we we want the best for everybody. We want to have a good time and we want yeah. everybody to make it their Yeah, but I, I also want people somewhat sober when they show up in my thing. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, I do not want somebody walking up to the microphone during my Q&A. It's like, hey, Hi. hey, Hi. <laughs> this place is great. Where am I? You, you're doing a show? Hey, you, you shut, you shut up. You, you don't know me. <laughs> it's like it's, it'd be bad. It's gonna be bad. I just, oh, right. I'm hoping I, I drill it into people. And like Alex Lowry, he does not help. It's like, dude, <laughs> you can't stop people. It's like yeah. we might just go back to like our, our, our room and just keep partying. It's like, I know, he, but he said he's gonna be in a jacuzzi anyway. I heard. Yeah, it. yeah. It's like, yeah, dude, just stay there. Don't even, don't even come out for my. I'm thing. gonna come hang out with you, Larry. Though I'm gonna come hang out with you, jacuzzi man. It's gonna be fun. I ain't taking my <laughs> pants off though. Don't ask. <laughs> hey, thanks again, Mark. Thanks again, chat. Shout out Thank to Rockfin and YouTube and uh, and Twitch because that's where we're streaming on right now. And we'll be back with round two probably tomorrow. Well, I'll be back with round two tomorrow. Mark's got other things to do. I can't have him here all the day, or else I would. Mark cool. Yeah, send me send me the uh, the link to this or or the audio so I can oh, yeah. uh, throw it on my thing. 
100 percent, brother 100 percent. i'll do it right after the show thank you so thank much thank you and it's been another glorious wednesday hump day this has been my favorite hump day all year i got to hang out with some awesome people all my favorite people are in the chats again much love and woo energy out to you all and until we do it again uh tomorrow i think tomorrow will probably be a good time to do it again because i'm feeling good and i'm feeling everything you know i gotta get my tickets uh this week for um for Jeff. i gotta get my tickets this week because i am going regardless when i get it i'm going and yeah I, as mark would say hot sex everyone yeah, I, I almost forgot that hot sex and hot coffee and hot tea <laughs> true earth entertainment that is the new brand as you see fmx is still here i'm still a thing i'm still doing the fmx radio obviously it's just all going to be the under the umbrella of true earth entertainment so that way i can put up all my conspiracy um edits i can do musical stuff i can do my clothing line i can do podcasts like this and do stuff with austin and melodome and everything will kind of be under this new umbrella of true earth entertainment that is that's, that's the thing that's where i'm going with it so thanks everybody much love and i can't wait to see y'all again have a blessed night you know and uh, be careful don't drink too much like mark said even before the event you know, take care of yourself please take care of yourself for me and i will take care of myself for you, you know, my, my favorite model lady but then on that Space Banana out to your King Shin. See you, Mr. Lev, Stephanie, Pamela, Tapered Bodies. Let me, I forgot to shout, almost forgot to shout all my people out. I'm so sorry. But yeah, Pamela, Dr. La. I mean, uh, so Miss Karen in here. I love you, sister. Miss Shelly, my other sister. Love y'all, love y'all. But I'm out. John, JJ, the gift giver. Can't forget my man. But we're gifting them people, man. Holding me down, holding down the Melodome after I was here with Flat Man X and the True Earth Entertainment. That's right. Simulation theory. That was fun, right? That was fun. We go deep. We go hard. We have fun. We don't take life too seriously because why? You know, it's not like we're making out of here alive. Let's see. I'll see y'all tomorrow. I got to go do some edits and make some dinner stuff, you know. Hello, Nikki.